Have you ever done something you didn't really think all the way through? It seems like a good idea at the time and you think, it probably won't happen. So you go for it. I have. You think, it's fine. There's no way. It's next to impossible. Then the possibility of success increases. That can't win, can it? Then the reality starts setting in. Then, the day finally arrives. Oh man. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Honey, I have some news. No reason. Hey, what's up? Where are we going? We're going to Manassas. This is a Tanowitz 36 inch bandsaw. As you can see, it's a beast of a machine. It's 98 inches tall, has a blade that's over 19 feet long, and weighs about 3,000 pounds. Think, Matt. <laughs> I think you probably didn't need that, but you know, you do you. <laughs> what was your first thought? Uh, exactly why, I'm mean, seeing it? Yeah. I thought you were crazy. <laughs> All right, get the thing in my face. <laughs> <laughs> when I won the auction, my first thought was cool. Then I realized I had no idea how to get it from point A to point B. I didn't know how I'd get it in my garage. I didn't even know if it would fit in my garage. Either way, it was mine now, so I had to figure something out. I already spent $500 on the bandsaw. Now I needed to rent a truck, a trailer, a pallet jack, get some straps, and throw in a pizza to entice my cousins to help me out. That brought us up to just under $1,000. Then pickup day arrived. The bandsaw was against the back wall, so Dick, the amazing older gentleman I bought the saw from, used his forklift to move it away from the wall, picked it up, put it on a pallet, and drove it onto our trailer. Thanks for the help, Dick. Then we were on the road. This is a video record of Jared's ridiculous buy. $500, 400-year-old bandsaw that we just loaded on a trailer successfully. Now Jared is about to embark on a 40-minute, probably an hour journey home, and then has no way of actually getting it off the trailer that will at least guarantee all of us surviving. Here we go. This is it. This is the moment that this is make or break for this journey right here. And he made it. He made it. And I didn't see it shift at all. He may have strapped it down pretty well. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting here contemplating. I think this is like probably the most unsafe thing I've ever done. I mean, just look at that. That could kill like us. us? Really? That's yeah. really more I'm concerned about. We, we should be in front, not behind. Yeah, what, I know. I, I know. Here we go onto the highway. And Jared is now pulled onto the highway. Doing 40 miles an hour. Doing 40 miles an hour. So far, so good. I do notice there's a little debris coming off. Looks like sawdust. You know, that, that could be dangerous. It could be a little dangerous. Yeah, a piece of sawdust. Why is Jared getting into a different lane? Oh, Jared, oh. Ooh, whoa, oh. hey. That's not how you do it. This car behind me. Yeah, hello. Uh, I don't know what it was. The lane ended, and there was no left blinker for him to turn on because the trailer blinker is out. That's true. We should have probably told him that. There's nothing That's we okay. can do about it now, though. I got him. I got. I, I could be his left blinker. Good. Stop. Once we got back to the house, the base and the motor mount came off first. 
Then we slowly rolled it forward with the pallet jack, keeping the straps attached to the top and the whole thing slightly tilted forward. Little by little we moved the base forward and then released more straps until it was on the ground. Then we leveled it as best we could with a few pieces of wood and that was that. Looking at this, looking at this, and my guess is that that is not going into there. 